So we have a track and field playing area in the shape of a rectangle with semicircles at each end. Always want to begin with a picture, so I'll stop there and we'll, we'll draw a picture. So we have our rectangle, and then on either end of the rectangle we have a semicircle. The inside perimeter of the track is to be 400 meters. So the question is, what should the dimensions of the track be so that the area of the rectangle is a maximum? So we, we have our picture drawn. Let's talk about the unknowns in this diagram. We have no idea how wide the track is. So when you take a look at the rectangle, this length is an unknown. In addition, this height is an unknown. So both of these are, are unknown lengths. So you want to give them variable names. It doesn't matter if you call it B and H for base and height, or X and Y, or L and W for length and width. It doesn't make any difference. I'm just going to go ahead and use X and Y. So I don't know this length, I'll call it X, and I do not know this height either, I'll call it Y. So these are some unknowns. I also don't know, um, I don't know the distance around the rectangle, that's an unknown as well. So now focus on what you're trying to find. It says that we're interested in the area of the rectangle. We want that to be a maximum. So I always recommend that you write down your goal. In other words, we want to maximize and then be very specific. Maximize what? We want to maximize the area, but not actually the area of this entire figure, but rather only the area of the rectangle. So we want to maximize the area of the rectangle. So whatever you want to maximize or minimize, that's what you want to begin by writing your, your equation of. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to write an equation for the area, but specifically just the area of the rectangle. And since my rectangle has a, a, a length of x and a, a width of y, or base times height, we know that the area then would just be x times y. All right, so moving on. Now looking at this function that we have right here, you'll notice that we have too many variables. We have two inputs, x and y, and one output, a for area. So this is where we need to write a second equation. I usually call this a constraint equation. So if you reread the problem, you want to find the constraint or a limitation. It said we have a track and field playing area in the shape of a rectangle with semicircles at each end, and the inside perimeter of the track is to be 400 meters. So that information right there is our constraint. We're limited to just 400 meters for the inside perimeter of the track. So we need to have an equation here, a constrained equation. Something's going to equal 400, and it's going to be the inside perimeter of the track. So in other words, we're talking about the straight edge here going around this semicircle. Then we have another straight edge, or straight away, and then we have the other semicircle. So what I have in red would represent the inside perimeter of the track. So we want to go ahead and add up basically these four sides. We have two straight sides and then we have two curved sides. So let's start with the straight sides. We know that if the bottom is labeled as x, then we also know that the top could be labeled as x as well. So the straightaways would be x plus x. In other words, that would be 2x. So that's going to be the length of each of the straight sections. But now we have to look at the, the length around the semicircles. So some things to remember. The distance around a circle is called the circumference. So this would kind of be off to the side. You'd want to remember that the circumference, the circumference equation, the, the distance around a circle is always pi times the diameter of the circle. Pi times the diameter of the circle. So looking at our diagram, what's the diameter? Well, the diameter would be this distance here, this vertical distance, both on the left as well as here on the right, what I'm drawing in purple. And you'll notice we labeled that diameter of the circle was actually the same as this value y, which was basically the height of my rectangle. So for my circle, the circumference would be pi times diameter, in other words, pi times y. And that would give us the distance around an entire circle. So now, if you think about actually running around this track, you notice that we're going to 
be running around a semicircle here on the left, but then another semicircle here on the right. So putting those two semicircles together, we would actually have a full circle. So for my constraint equation, I have to add, I have the two straightaways, now adding these two yellow semicircles, the distance around them would really be the same as the circumference of the full circle, which would be pi times y. So this is going to be my constraint equation. And remember, the purpose of the constraint equation is that we want to be able to go ahead and substitute into my area equation and eliminate a variable. So you need to solve for one of the variables in the constraint equation. And it doesn't matter which you choose. You kind of just want to choose um, which one maybe you, you feel is easiest. It doesn't make a, a bit of difference. I'm going to go ahead and just solve for y. So I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides. And then I will divide by y. So I will have y is equal to 400 minus 2x, and that entire quantity will get divided by pi. And I always put a box around this equation because this is my equation that relates x and y in my particular uh, diagram here. So now I'm going to substitute this y value into my area equation, and now I'm going to have a new equation for area, and it's going to be entirely in terms of x. So it would be x times 400 minus 2x, all divided by pi. Make that look a little better. x times 400 minus 2x, all divided by pi. So now, let's just clean this up a bit so that it looks more familiar to us, so we have an idea of what this area function looks like graphically. So if you just think of this as really an x over 1, then we can go ahead and distribute the x into the numerator here. So that would give me my area is equal to 400x minus 2x squared. That entire quantity will get divided by pi. And then we can go ahead and do term by term division here. And we can write this as 400x divided by pi minus 2x squared divided by pi. And that would be fine, um, but I, I tend to like to see my, my actual coefficients. So really, I have a coefficient of 400 divided by pi that I'm multiplying times x minus 2 over pi, which is getting multiplied by x squared. So this would be my model. This is my model. And this is what we are trying to maximize. We wanted to maximize area. So now we need to think for a moment up graphically about what this would look like. And we don't want to use our, our graphing calculators, but we want to use our knowledge of the functions we've studied so far. So remembering that what we really have here is a degree of two. So we know that this function is quadratic. We know that that means it would be a parabola. And because of this negative, we have a negative leading coefficient, that means our parabola would open down. So if we were to just rough sketch, nothing super exact here, but rough sketch here, we know we're putting in an x value, we're going to get out an area, and we have this parabola that's opening down. So if we want to maximize the area, the maximum is going to occur right here at this high point, which of course is going to be the vertex of the parabola. So thinking about the vertex as a coordinate again, we don't want to label it as x, y, but rather looking at our model, we would put in an x value and output an area. So the maximum, the vertex will be an x coordinate and then an a coordinate or an area coordinate. So how do we find the vertex? We have, an, we have a nice formula for that. So we know that we can find the x value of the vertex by using negative b over 2a. So that would be negative b over 2a. Also, you could think of it as the opposite of b over 2a if you want to. Now, looking at your model, you might find that you want to reorder this so this is in standard form. So we really have negative 2 over pi times x squared plus 400 over pi times x. If you wish to reorder it, you certainly can, because that might help you identify more clearly your a and your b values. So you can see my a value is negative 2 over pi, and my b value is 400 over pi. So now we can go ahead and find our vertex. All right, so we're going to take negative b, so that would be negative 400 divided by pi. And I'm going to put that in parentheses so you can see that's my numerator, all divided by 2 times a. 
and a is negative 2 divided by pi. Now, that looks pretty messy, but actually is going to simplify fairly nicely if you keep going with, um, with your computation here. So we end up with negative 400 over pi for that numerator. And then denominator, remember this is just 2 over 1, so that's really going to be negative 4 divided by pi. And then we know we're going to just change our division to multiplying by the reciprocal. So look what happens if you leave your negative 400 divided by pi, but then you multiply, oops, try that again, multiply by the reciprocal of the bottom, which would be then pi divided by negative 4. So now you can see that my pi's are going So this means we have the x value that's positive 100 for the vertex, and we don't know the y value. But we actually have to go all the way back to the original problem to see what it's asking of us. So going back to my original problem here, let's read the actual question. The question stated, what should the dimensions of the track be so that the area of the rectangle is a maximum? So in other words, we'll go ahead and just give the dimensions of the rectangle. And we already have one of the dimensions. We know x. x is 100. So the other dimension that I need is y. So usually the answer is, well, you'll plug in a 100, which I agree, but you need to make a decision where you're going to plug in x equals 100. We have a couple of options. You have this area model here. We could be plugging in 100 into my area model. That would give me the largest area. Or I go back to my constraint equation here, and I could be plugging x equals 100 in here, and that would give me the y value. So what's it asking for? Well, if it wants the dimension, then it wants the y value. So we actually need to substitute our value of 100 back here into our constraint equation to get the y value. So substituting into my constraint equation, I'll have 400 minus 2 times 100, there I'm substituting in the x value of my vertex, all divided by pi. And then you can certainly go to your calculator to get that approximation, which I believe is going to be about 63.66. About 63.66. So finally we can answer the question, and we know that the rectangle dimensions, the rectangle dimensions would be 100, if you look back in the problem to see what the units were, you'll notice that the 400 was measured in meters. So the rectangle dimensions would be 100 meters by 63.66 meters. And this will yield the largest area of the rectangle. So this will yield a maximum, I'll say, a maximum area of the rectangle. Or the rectangular portion of the track.